Okay, Christian, as far as I'm concerned, you are the face of Survivor David versus Goliath. From the very first episode when you won that challenge on the boat until now. So I'm just dying to know, how has your life changed in these past few months? Well, you know, it's interesting. You know, I, I tried to keep the, the, the change as, 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 as small as, as, you know, as manageable as possible. You know, I, I, uh, you know, I started my new job. You know, I'm teaching a class. Um, you know, at Florida State University, and so like, you know, I, I don't talk about Survivor during the class. Uh, I just kind of do my business, and you know, so I sort of try to try to sort of just like treat it, treat it like it's normal. Things changing, uh, you know, I do get recognized a lot walking around Tallahassee. <laughs> um, you know, that that happens quite a bit, and I think the most jarring is I, I went out to, to to dinner with my girlfriend Emily for my birthday, and we were in this little hole in the wall restaurant with with four people in it, and I was like, okay. 25% chance, you know, so, 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 I mean, so what is the chances that I'll be seen? Approximately 1 in 40 Americans watch Survivor. There's four people here. Very small. Sure enough, people get up from the table and say, can we have a photo? I'm like, you're kidding, <laughs> you're kidding me. So, the, yeah. I have a feeling that's not going to go away anytime soon. Oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting prospect. We'll, we'll see how that plays out. Right. Well, you know, these these fellow castaways were trying to get you out of this game for so long. It kind of just was like this this robotic energy of the show. We got to get Christian out. We got to get Christian out. And I think, as you said, they, there were something like eighteen votes cast against you over these past few weeks. So, why do you think you were such a big target? I think that um, I became a target for, I guess, a few reasons. The big one. Um, was that people seem to like talking to me and like working with me. Um, Angelina has a great secret scene where she explains why she's targeting me right after the merge in that she said she was talking to me, and I, and I was really trying to charm Angelina, you know, so that way she would want to work with me. I needed as many options as possible. And she was like, yeah, I want to work with him. And then she caught herself and said, wait, if I want to work with him, then everyone wants to work with him. And, that, mm -hmm. and, and, and I, I, she said I was, she was falling, quote, under my spell – which I never realized I had a spell, but that's nice to hear. Um, <laughs> so I think that that was the number one reason, uh, really more than anything else. I've heard people say that I shouldn't have said I, I wrote slide puzzle algorithms, but I think that's actually an answer, ancillary reason. I think it's mostly that uh, people were afraid that if I got too much traction or I got too deep that I would win and there, wasn't a way, there wouldn't be a way to stop me. Mm -hmm. That's my well, guess. Yeah. And, you know, Davey won that – he found that idol um, that I don't think anyone knew about. And w when he stood up to play the idol, what went through your mind? Or did you think, oh, he's going to play an idol for me again, just like he did a couple weeks ago? Oh, I, 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 I had no illusions that David would play an idol for me a second time. The only reason I knew he'd do it the first time is because he told me, because we talked about it, and he, and, I, and he was motivated for a number of reasons to do it. Um, I knew about his idol, his final seven oh, okay. idol. He told me about it, so I was like, and in fact, uh, we, we he talked about how should I do this? How, you know, should I play this? And I'm like, well, Davey, I think you are getting votes. Um, you know, I, it's, it's quite possible all these targets keep bouncing around. Um, but he wanted, like, he wanted to know, he wanted to be able to play it, and he didn't know what to say that wouldn't alert people to do other things. And I think he wanted Nick to play his idol. And I said, well, here's what you can say: um, you say, I'm, I, Jeff, I'm worried someone in my alliance might have turned on me. Um, you know, so I'm playing this just in case. And I forget exactly what happened. I missed what he said in the episode last night, but I remember him saying exactly what I told, what I, what I suggested he say. So I'm like, oh, wow, Davey really trusts me. He really trusts mm -hmm. me in this moment to, like, put these decisions in his hands. So I'm like, I was like, wow, if I get back to camp, you know, I know that Davey's a person that really takes my opinion seriously. And that'll be good to know. Of course, we know how things went. Yeah. Well, let's switch gears and talk about the Mason-Dixon alliance because you, you and Nick were so close for pretty much the whole game from what, day one or day two. What was it? Can you pinpoint the moment that, that you guys kind of had, had this rift and, and caused you to split up? Well, well, the most clear and obvious one is when I left him out of the Carl vote, which was a tough decision, but a decision I, I stand by and I and, and I had reasons for. And, um, and I knew it would make him mad, and, and it was partly kind of by design – um, because so many people seem to like me so much, I needed the appearance that hey, maybe I'm not as well liked as uh, <laughs> as people have been rumored. Look, Christian did this, did this thing, made people mad. I didn't know how mad he was going to get. 
Um, mm-hmm. So, but before that, I mean, but it really goes. But the reason that all went down, and there are many, um, is that even though we were close and we counted each other for these votes, I I always go back to how we started that alliance. And he actually approached me about this alliance like within like an hour of hitting the beach, as is like, hey, you meet to the end all the way, and mm-hmm. you, and you know that's a lie. You know that's not true. And I always had that in the back of my head that that's how we started this whole thing and that that's the sort of, you know, even though it, it was helpful for him and me to work together and we had a great time working together, some great votes. The Jess vote was awesome. Um, I knew in the back of my mind that when it, things came down to it, he was going to cut me. So I needed to change up the game in a way that he didn't quite have so much power. Hmm. Well, switching gears again to Mike this time. Mike, it seemed like he only went into game mode to get you out after he won immunity. Almost like this necklace gave him a superpower, and he's like, now I can do whatever I want to do. Now, and you're, you've won immunity before, so take us through what winning that necklace does to your mindset. Does it make you kind of feel like a, like a superhero or something? It can, Getting the necklace and being immune, yes, it can embolden you to make – uh, to, to make plays. It can also, though, lull you into a false sense of security, that you feel secure right now and you forget what it's like to be, to be targeted. So it's possible. So I, I've seen it go both ways on the show. Um, for me, I'm not, you know, I, my reaction was, I guess, a bit different in that I acknowledge that I have the immunity necklace. That means I'm not going home. Um, I really need to concentrate on uh, what's the best move for me moving forward for this next vote. And that's, I think, what Mike was doing, too. Um, so, like, when it came to my Alec decision, though, I just really tried to take a step back, try to be hyper-rational about my decision-making, and really nail down all the reasons to keep them and not to keep them and what the game will look like from this point on. Um, so, does it have a psychological effect? It certainly can. When I had the necklace, I really did my dangdest to, uh, um, to, 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 to mitigate my biases because I knew it could have an effect. And th- that challenge that you won against Alec, it, it was the most epic David versus Goliath showdown. Six hours of standing on that post talking to Jeff Probst. Uh, was that one of your best moments on the whole show? Uh, yeah, that definitely was one of my – best moment because it was like not even one moment it was like a whole event it was mm-hmm. an experience in and of itself and and not just for me uh you just talk to the people on the sit-out bench it just felt this showdown between me, me and alec it felt epic and that's not a word i typically use and mm-hmm. it just felt like we all went through an, just whole ordeal together it was weirdly bonding um and it ended with a sunset and Alec mm-hmm. walking off the beach to, to look at it. It just it, – it, it was it felt poignant and it felt – it felt meaningful in a weird way. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely one of my top moments. Well, last week when Gabby turned on you, I, I feel like millions of Survivor fans were kind of in a state of mourning because we all wanted you guys to make it to the end together. And here she is, you know, trying to rally the troops against you. You don't have any hard feelings, though, right? It was it was just a game move, and you guys are you guys are fine. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, in fact, I mean, I mean, I I I feel for the people that thought that we'd be able to get to the end of the game together because I I knew in my heart that that couldn't happen, or if it would happen, it would be at the grand expense of Gabby's game, because mm. she was right. I was getting credit for all these moves that we do together, and I wasn't even trying to take the credit. People just kind of just said. Oh, there's Christian. He was involved in the move. It was all him. And it's like, no, I, I, I was, I was a voice. I was a voice in it. I had a role in it. Often not the, the primary role, but almost because you're viewed as the nerdy strategist, you just get that credit as a consequence. And she knew that, and I knew that. Um, in fact, I tried a little too late, perhaps. Um, I talked to her. I was like, look, I'm noticing that, you know, you're not getting the credit you deserve on these votes. And she knew this. That was not news to her. And I was trying to say, look. You realize that for some reason you're in that final three. Whether I'm there or I'm not there, you're getting credit where it's where it's due. I mean, I would not be well served to lie and take credit mm-hmm. from you. She's like, yeah, I know. Um, and she said, but you you would get you would get credit anyway, though. And so I, I knew that she had to take me out at some point. 
who was your dream final two or final three? Who do you think you could have easily won against? I uh, sort of easily won against. I mean, I really would have. Ra- I I did not care who I got to the end with. Not mm-hmm. even necessarily like, oh my god, I would have just beaten everyone hands down, no contest. That's not really what I'm what, I, what I'm sort of like thinking here. It was more that I was targeted at 13, at 12, at 11, a am at 10. I have to make a move at nine. Targeted at eight. Targeted at seven. If I get to the mm-hmm. end. Uh, you know, like, you know, if I get to the end, I, I I might not have a lot of choice in the matter as to who I take with me. I just need to get through these votes. And if, if I had one uh, take on that, it's that if I, if people had tried to take me out that many times in a row, and I got to the end, and the jury's making decisions who's to win, I think it would be hard for anyone to say you that people tried to make you lose this many times. Guess what? You lose anyway. I think that would be the hard thing for them to do. Well, it was great to talk to you. Next week is the big finale. Are you getting excited to reunite with all these guys? No, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to see them all. I still have to figure out what I'm wearing. I I, I don't know. That, <laughs> that robot shirt's not in great shape after all that. So. <laughs> great. Well, we'll see you then. Thank you so much.